Hey everyone, back to baseball as the Reds try to start the second half just the way they ended the first, taking on the Colorado Rockies. How's his first start? Pokey Reese with a leadoff double. That's a good one. Michael Tucker with an infield single. Sean Casey with a rip up the middle. One nothing. Greg Vaughn dumps one to right. Two nothing. Eddie Taubins able to rip up the middle. Two more score. Five straight hits. Reds go up five nothing. Then in the third, after Casey doubled, Greg Vaughn says goodbye to you. 7-2 Reds, all was going smoothly till the ninth. Stan Belinda gives up four runs, including this three-run job to Hamilton. It was 10-7 before Danny Graves came in to shut him down. Casey fouled a ball off his foot. Don't worry, he's going to be okay. Reds go 1-0 in the second half. Seven-day layoff, a uh, little stiffness in the shoulder from that, being able to throw a lot the last three days. But uh, uh, we're good enough tonight. I was able to keep the ball down, got in on some guys, uh, broke some bats, and, and guys made all the plays. I just see the ball swing hard, you know what I mean? I just, there's no secret. I just see ball and try to hit. Taking the hill, trying to make it two in a row over the Rockies, and Pedro Estacio. Reds try to get started early, just like last night. Dimitri Young with a bloop to left. Bichette comes in. That's a bad slide. Perez will end up chasing it. Young ends up on third. Greg Vaughn with a chance to bring him in. Estacio sends him down swinging. Vallone did not have the one-hit magic tonight. Kurt Abbott in the second. Vaughn will not be able to get to this one. It's going to go all the way to the wall. Double. Two runs score, and the inning would get worse. Blanco with some double trouble of his own. Abbott will score. It was four zip in the second. Dante Bichette had a bad night. Easy fly ball left. The goal didn't cost him, though, at least earlier. The Reds would eventually score on a sack fly. Pedro Estacio had the Reds' number. Four hits over eight innings. Dimitri had a good night. Add to the triple a ninth-inning bomb, but it wasn't nearly enough. The Reds lose for only the sixth time in 22 outings. 6-2. Estacio just too tough. He made pitches when he had to. He had a good sinker tonight. And, you know, give him credit. He just stopped our bats. You know, we went to the ninth inning with only two hits. We're not that type of club. We generally can come back, but he had it tonight, and that was it. It's up our outing for me, but uh, he got beat by him. They beat me tonight, and that guy on the other side did a good job. I mean, he pitched well, and he swung the bat. Every one of his pitches kept us baffled at the plate, and his offense came through for him early in the game, and um, he was able to keep us back. Welcome back. The Reds ride an emotional roller coaster in the ninth inning today to beat the Rockies 3-2, to two, taking 2-3 of three from Colorado. Let's go to Synergy Field. Deion Sanders back in a Reds uniform. He was only visiting, watching his former teammate Brett Tomko pitch eight and two-thirds scoreless ball. The Reds threatening the sixth. Jeffrey Hammonds, though, with a fly ball. But Jeff Berry makes an outstanding catch on that hot AstroTurf. No score. A shin guard helped Sean Casey get back in the lineup after sitting out last night. And Casey is hit by the pitch in the seventh. He is okay. Next up, Greg Vaughn, who breaks up the scoreless affair. Watch Vaughn here. Bash this two-run homer off starter Brian Bohannon. Vaughn's 21st home in the season makes it Reds 2 to nothing. Tomko pulled with one out to go. Larry Walker pinch hits, and Scott Sullivan needs just one strike to end it. But Walker ties it with a two-run homer to left field. Williamson has given up three ninth-inning homers in two weeks. But in the bottom of the ninth, first batter up, Jeffrey Hammonds. Watch here as Hammonds bangs the game-winning homer off Jerry Depoto over the left field wall. Reds win it 3-2. to two. Plenty of highs and lows to go around. When you come three out of four times, you get two-run homers in the ninth inning, you know. So not much confidence there. One out to go. You're pulled. You looked upset. Like I said, that's not my decision. Uh, I felt fine, but I mean, the, the main thing is we won. Your senses on the bench is, hey, let's let's finish it off right here. And, you know, Hammonds must have hurt somebody. Allowing the Tigers to beat them, nine, eight, and ten innings. Let's go to Synergy Field. Starter Steve Avery shelled in the first. This is Tony Clark with a three-run homer to right. Detroit leads at four zip. Next inning, Dean Palmer by two-run shot. Tigers six to nothing. Avery gives up four hits, six walks, and three plus innings. Must be the heat. But the Reds score five in the third. Greg Vaughn launches his third, 23rd homer this season. That's a three run shot. Tigers lead, cut to 6 5. Reds take the lead, but in the seventh, the Tigers tie it when Pokey's Aaron throws, scores Gabe Kapler. It's tied eight apiece, go to extra innings. Watch Brad Osmus here with the suicide squeeze. Brings home Frank Catalanota with the winning run. The Reds lose 9 10. Two zip already when Tony Clark for the second night in a row gets large. Three zip before you can blink. But here comes the offense. Eddie Taubensee with the Reds' first hit of the night in the fifth. Larkin scores 3 1. Then Booney in a hole to short. Cruz tries to get him. 
He doesn't. Gets away. Taubins, he scores to make it 3-2. to two. Reyes gave up two more, so the Reds were down 5-2, and they went to work in the infield. Taubins, he threw a diving Clark. No one covering. That scores Casey. Cameron, down to third. They cannot turn two on this one. Vaughn will score. Then is Boone again down to third. No throw. Larkin will score. They tie it at five, and here we go again. Sullivan this time to Damian Easley, gone. The Reds go down 7-5, but they will not give up. In the ninth, Pokey Reese goes down to get one. Cameron will score 7-6. Michael Tucker is next with two on, up the middle. Slow enough to get one and two. Ball game. The theme is getting old in a hurry. No, I'm not complaining, but it's frustrating, you know. It's, it's a hard thing to, to be dealing with, and uh, it's limiting, you know. It, the way it feels, there's certain things I just can't do that I'm used to doing, and uh, you know, that's not good. We, we've happened to lose two tough ones in a row, and you know, but you know, this team that's been resilient all year, we battled tonight again, and, and uh, you know, I expect to come out and play with them. After Pokey Reese doubled, Dimitri Young starting to look like 98 version of Dimitri. Rips a single, Pokey scores one zip. Young caught stealing one pitch too early because Greg Vaughn starting to look like the 98 Vaughn, number 24 on the year. Two zip reds. It was three zip in the second when Sean Casey did what Sean Casey does. Rips a shot to the corner. Two more score on the ground rule double. Five nothing red. Steve Paris, two solo homers in seven innings. Not bad. Got to see this one though. Jason LaRue hits one to the wall. Now Higginson is going to come up throwing. No one's at second except LaRue. Ouch. So Jason's off to third where he will get kneed in the face, jam his foot on the bag. Wow. He never even scored, but he continued to play. Didn't need it. Danny Graves pitches the eighth and ninth for the save. Paris is seven and one. Five two the final. You know, I just go out every game trying to get seven innings in, keep the team in the game. Uh, we're going to do some hitting. Every once in a while, we're not going to score some runs, but most of the time, we're going to score five, six runs a game. If I go, the Reds go. If I don't go, we don't go. So that's the way I look at it. I mean, came out. Last couple games didn't do do too well, offensively or defensively. So I just tried to come out. Good hey everyone. Big Mac in town for the first of two Central Division battles: Cardinals and Reds. First batter of the game, J.D. Drew, a leadoff double off Ron Valone. This would prove to be significant. Tell you why a little bit later. In the fourth, Pokey Reese off no hit wonder. Jose Jimenez will it make it over the wall? Yeah, one zip Reds. They came to see Big Mac. This is the only park he's visited yet and failed to hit a homer in. He's still that same way. Meanwhile, Ron Vallone was sailing along. Next threat came in the eighth. Dave Howard bloops to center. Cameron drops it, but there's Pokey. Fires a bullet the second they got him. All right. That leadoff hit to Drew. The only hit Vallone gave up all game. Scott Williamson in the ninth. Blown four of his last five saves. But Lankford strikes out. McGuire strikes out. Tatis strikes out to end it. Combined one hitter, one nothing Reds. It's a team game. I went out there and tried to pitch my game. The guys played great behind me, and uh, Pokey up, Pokey Reese came up kind of big, a little strong on us. Get that one run was important. Who would have thunk, you know, me hitting a home run would uh, win it for us? But uh, Valone, you got to give all the credit to uh, Ronnie. He pitched a great game, and you know we played good defense behind him, and we came. Good morning, everyone. We have talked about the Reds' pitching problems nearly every day since the All-Star break. The once dependable bullpen now searching for a little confidence. Let's head to Synergy, where it was 142 degrees about game time. Top of the first, cards hot. Up 1-0 when Fernando Tatis takes the offering deep, 3-0. But the Reds fight back. Dimitri Young continues on his tear. A solo job at the bottom of one, 3-1. To the fourth we go. Mike Cameron, man aboard, gone. We are all tied at three. Now, Tom Coe was awesome after the first. Booney setting him up for the win in the eighth. Hal Morris on deck, watching Aaron Boone untie it. A two-run shot to right. The Reds go up 5-3. Time to get out the brooms, right? The wait, the hubcaps fall off. Danny Graves facing Big Mac. Never homered in synergy till now. Rare opposite field shot. The Tucker can't reach, and everything's still okay at 5-4. Till Fernando Tatis again. A two-run rocket, but the Reds still not dying. They walk the bases loaded in the ninth. Cameron with a shot to center stays up too long. Reds lose 6-5. You know, giving up two home runs in the last inning, it's not going to get it done. I got the ball up to Tatis, 
and he did what he's supposed to do with it. I've been doing my job, going out there and pitching and giving a lot of innings and, and keeping our ball club in it. And that's, you know, that's all I can do. And I can't worry about it. Good news for the Giants. They're dealing with the Reds. Chris Brock's been shell lately. Lasted only one of a third his last start. He's against Steve Avery and the Reds. Steve Avery just can't throw a strike. Five walks in an inning and a two-thirds tonight. Now, this is 27 walks in Steve Avery's last 22 and a third innings. Just kills himself with walks here. Santangelo, Aurelia, Bonds to load the bases. And he does it early. Eight times now in his 19 starts, he's walked five or more. Can't win that way. He walked five and one and two thirds, and then this. Charlie Hayes, little blooper to center. Bonds would score. The other thing that happens is you sort of lower your fielders behind you to sleep. 3-1, Greg Vaughn up. Lift off. Deep to right, and it leaves. And Greg Vaughn, just like that, has tied this bad boy up. His 25th of the season. You see Brock's react. Reds and Giants top of the ninth. Reds down 6-3 when Jason LaRue goes deep. Two run home run to left off Rob Nen. Reds cutting the lead to 6-5. LaRue's first major league home run. Two batters later. Runner at first. One out for Pokey Reese. The hard grounder to Bill Miller. He makes the nice play, starts the double play. Giants hold on for the 6-5 victory. Steve Avery, the Cincinnati starter, is having issues finding the plate. And one and two-thirds innings of work gives up three earned runs and five bases on balls. Reds have lost six of their last seven in San Francisco. With the stories behind the scores. Good evening to you. The Big Reds road machine took advantage of the Giants self-destructing this afternoon that helped keep the pressure on the Astros. At 3-com, tied at 1 and a 4th, Mark Lewis. Is it fair? Yes! A three-run homer off the screen for one Reds. Bottom of the frame, Ellis Burke swings the big lumber, and that one's gone. Off Harnish. Reds' lead is a deuce. Next inning, Burks again. This time, it's a three-run blast off Harnish. That gives the G-men the lead 5-4. to four. It would stay that way until the ninth pinch hitter Demetri Young comes up large. The single scores pinch runner Chris Steins and Mike Cameron, and the Reds go up 6-5. to five. Then Sean Casey with a routine ground ball to short. Rich Aurelio boots it, and Jason LaRue scores a critical seventh run. That's because the bottom of the ninth, Marvin Menard leads off with a homer off Reyes, and it's 7-6. to six. Danny Graves relieves and induces Jeff Kent to pop up. Pokey tracks it down, and then alertly rifles it to first. The throw doubles up Barry Bonds, and the Reds escape with a Seven to six. No, I'm not going to ever toot my own horn. You know, uh, it's this is a team sport. We go out there as a team, and we win as a team. We lose as a team. That's his way. Steve Paris is not using his right arm to pat himself on the back. He's using it to ring up the best one-loss record on the Reds' pitching staff. After today's start against the Giants, he's seven and one. That's more than half as many wins as Paris had in his major league career before the season. He began the year with 12 wins and 14 losses. So how did 31-year-old Steve Paris become the Reds' most consistent and arguably best starting pitcher? Tonight, we take a closer look as we present the sights and sounds of Paris. He made his Reds' debut in June of last year and was one of the team's best pitchers down the stretch, going 5-2 and two in his last eight starts. Yet in April, when the Reds came north from spring training, Steve Paris was not on the roster. Jim Bowden sent him to Indianapolis. I wasn't real happy about it, um, but there's nothing I could do about it, really. I mean, he's not going to, if I would have flipped, he's not going to say, well, since you flipped, I'm going to bring you back up here. I'm not going to option you down. So it was just a matter of going down there, staying positive, um, pitching well. He spent a month in the minors before getting called up and has been in the Reds' rotation ever since. So where would the team be if he hadn't been sent down in the first place? Well, I'm going to skip that question. <laughs> it would have been nice. He certainly deserved to be here. There's no question about it. Paris was demoted because he had minor league options left. In 10 years of pro ball, he had only pitched in 41 major league games. His biggest problem was a bum shoulder that required surgery in 93 and 96. The Reds signed him in 97. If you saw him in spring training the first year we got him, he was pitiful. And uh, he couldn't have made the club. And then all of a sudden, we sent him out to Indianapolis where he got a chance to work on a regular basis, strengthen his arm, get a little better command, and turned in some sterling performances. We brought him up last year, and, you know, look what he's done for us since last year and this year. He's the Reds' most consistent starter, averaging nearly seven innings per outing. And while he's not likely to ring up a big strikeout total, 
He's also not likely to give up many walks. He's not a dominating pitcher, but he's the, the type of guy that we feel good every time he goes out there, and he's kept us in every ball game, and, and uh, that's what you want uh, from a starting pitcher, uh, you know, is go out there and give the, the uh, team a chance to win, throw strikes, and, and uh, keep us in ball games, and he's done that every time. And he doesn't really do the same thing twice to hitters, so he's always moving the ball around, always working the hitters in different ways, so he's a guy who knows how to pitch and, and just goes out there and just pumps the strike zone. He pumps the strike zone, but isn't getting too pumped up over his success. I've always been an even kill person. No matter how good I do or how bad I do, I'm going to be the same type of individual. I don't get up too much when I win. I don't get down too much when I lose, because I know it's going to happen. I figure every game I go out there, I'm only as good as the last game I pitch. And I keep saying that every time, and I'm going to keep on saying that. You know, I don't care if I ever sign a good contract or not. You're still only as good as the last game you pitch. And you probably caught the reference to his contract. Paris will make, a meager by baseball standards, 275000 this year. But he's eligible for arbitration after the season and looking for a big raise. As in, his millions are on the way. Good evening to you. Extra innings this afternoon in San Francisco. The Reds played one of those games that never seemed as if it was ever going to end. It did in 14. To three com, bottom of the third. Stan Javier shoots one over the first base bag. It's a fair ball. Drives in Bill Miller, 1-0 Giants. Steve Paris pitched well again, but left the game with a right shoulder stiffness after five. He'll get a no decision because of the Pokemon. He just gets it done. A line drive home run to left. Number seven for race and we're tied at one. The Giants loaded the bases in the eighth and all JT Snow can do is watch a perfect pitch by Dennis Reyes and we're still tied at one. And we go on to the 14th. Michael Tucker first at bat of the game. See you later. That ball is gone. The longest game of the season for the Reds and they win it two to one and stay two and a half games back of the Astros. Cepeda's jersey number hanging on the wall in Frisco. Big day for him, and it looked like a big day for the Giants when Stan Javier drove in a run against Steve Paris. The Giants strike first, one nothing, And then Paris, the steadiest of the Reds starters, had to leave the game. The Reds needed a little pop. They got some pop from Pokey Reese. He strokes a solo home run to tie the game. That was critical because the Giants starter, Sean Estes, was pitching superbly. But the Reds' bullpen was up to the task going into extra innings. Scott Williamson sits down Brett Main in the 12th. Finally, in the 14th, Michael Tucker said enough's enough. He put this Rob Nen pitch into the seats for the winning run. Tucker with the hit, then Stan Belinda with the finish as the Reds win and take two out of three from the San Francisco.